Let's take a look at section 10.3 using chords. Now remember, chords are not, you know, we're not talking about the ones that we use when playing guitar or uh, a piece of rope or a line. You know, this right here is a chord that where it's a segment that goes from one end of the circle to the other. And don't forget, a diameter can also be considered a chord, okay? Because of the fact, but the difference is that the diameter goes through the center. All right, so let's take a look and check out some theorems right here. The first one is 10.6 congruent corresponding chord theorem. So in this circle, you see two chords, all right? And the two chords, I'll go ahead and highlight in blue, we got CD and chord AB. So what we're saying here is this, that these two chords, because they're congruent, the arc right here from A to B and C to D, these two arcs are congruent as well. Okay, so in the same circle or in congruent circles, two minor arcs are congruent if and only if their corresponding chords are congruent as well. Okay, so once again, we have two chords in the same circle. They're congruent, therefore, the arcs, the minor arcs that are bound by uh, the chord happen to be congruent. All right, moving on. Let's take a look at theorem 10.7. We have the perpendicular chord bisector theorem. And it says, if a diameter of a circle is perpendicular to a chord, then the diameter bisects the chord and its arc. So looking at the diagram right here, we have E to G. Okay, that is a chord, but more specifically, it's a diameter because it's going through the center. And it's perpendicular, okay, to chord F, D. How do I know? They've got this little perpendicular symbol there. So because of that, what that tells me here is that G to D, okay, I'll go ahead and bound that by this yellow right here, or by gold. G to D, this chord is congruent to G to F. And there you go. What we also know right here is that H to D, okay, is congruent to HF because it is bisecting. So let me go ahead and include that one last piece right here. This is also important that both HF and G to, or HF and HD are congruent to each other. Okay, and it also tells me right there. Perpendicular chord bisector theorem. All right, so if you see that, we there's some chords that we could say is congruent or are congruent, or we know that some segments happen to be congruent to each other right there. <clears throat> Going to theorem 10.8, we have the perpendicular chord bisector converse. Okay, so this one right here, what we see first is I know that T to R, okay, this chord is being bisected by SQ, okay? And important to note that they tell me one, that I know it's being bisected because T to P is congruent to P to R. And then we have this perpendicular symbol there, okay? So having those two right there, okay? So if, if we read the, um, the theorem says if one chord of a circle is perpendicular bisect of another chord, then the first chord is a diameter. So what that tells me here is that now we can justify the fact that this right here, S to Q, is the diameter. All right. And just like that, there's perpendicular chord bisector converse. Let's go next equidistant chords theorem, okay? So right here, in the same circle, or in two congruent circles, two chords are congruent if and only if they are equidistant to the center. So what they're saying is that chord C to D 
and chord A to B right here, these two chords, okay, they are equidistant to the center, meaning that G to E right here is congruent or equal to E to F, okay? Those two right there are congruent if and only if they're equidistant to the center. So the two chords are congruent, meaning that C to D right here, right? What's in blue and A to B are congruent. But it, don't forget, another thing that they do show right here is that E to F and E to G are perpendicular. Remember, when we talk about distance from a point to a line, we say it's going to be the most direct is from the, the point and then perpendicular to that line. Okay, so that was earlier on in the school year, some basic geometry concepts right there. So it's not just, we just can't say any old line is from the center to um, the chord. It has to be perpendicular in order for this to be uh, a true statement. All right, so let's put it all together and let's see what we can do right here in the extra practice. And so when we look at this, um, there's a whole lot of parts that are being used, okay? Not just um, theorems from this chapter, but also from earlier on in the school year. So let's see if we could put this all together, okay? So the question one says, what is the measure of Wx? And Wx happens to be out over here, up at the top. Now, how am I supposed to figure out that? That, that arc line. Well, don't forget, we have right here 42. So angle Z, Q, Y is 42. Well, that angle and angle W, Q, X are congruent to one another. And the reason being, remember, they're vertical angles. So this right here happens to be 42 degrees as well. Well, the measure of this arc right here is going to equal the measure of the central angle. So if the central angle is 42, then Wx is going to be 42 degrees as well. Okay. So now let's take a look next up at yz, number two. So the question now is what it happens to be y to z. Okay. Now that right there is not, okay, let's make sure we understand that y to z is not a chord, or sorry, it's not the arc. This happens to be a chord right here. And y to z is bound by angle z, q, y. And if it's bound by that angle, well, it tells me that that arc right here, if we think about the arc measurement, of y to z, it's going to be congruent to arc wx. And so if that is congruent, then what that allows me to realize here is this, that the distance between the chords right there are congruent as well. So if you look right here, segment wx is 3.6, yz will also be 3.6. And this goes into uh, the theorem that we had earlier, 10.6, which was congruent corresponding chords theorem. So we have chords that are corresponding. And then we know right here the fact that since those chords are congruent, we can go ahead and say that the arcs, or well, this time we know that the arcs are congruent. Then we know that those chords right there are congruent as well. All right, let's go take a look at number three, which asks for WZ, okay? So let's see, WZ happens to be right here. I'll go ahead and mark that in green. And what can I do? Well, remember, if we take a look at segment 
x, z, okay? That is a straight line. And I know one of the angles is 42. So what I could figure out right here is, well, what is angle W, Q, Z, all right? That's what I'm gonna find out first, angle W, Q, Z. And I'm gonna take 180 minus 42, okay? And so by doing that right there, I realize that I have 138 degrees. So I'll put 138 in there. And so since that is the angle, the central angle for angle W, X, Z, then I know that right here, arc W or segment W, Z, and let's think about the other side right here. Uh, it's going to be vertical angles for angles X, Q, Y. So that means that this angle is also 138. So why is that important? Because remember, if I have two arcs that are congruent, then I have chords that are congruent. Our corresponding chords theorem. So now, what that tells me is that, look, that these two segments right here, WX, or sorry, XY, is congruent to WZ. And therefore, I can know that, hey, this is 9.2 right here. And if we take a look at number four, we're looking at what is arc, the measure of arc XY, all right? Let's go ahead and color that up right here. So we're looking at x, y, which is on the right-hand side, that arc. And if I know that the, right here, we've mentioned that the central angle to that is 138, then that arc measurement is going to equal 138 as well. Because remember, the central angle is equal to the measure of the arc. So combining right here, a little bit of 10.1, some stuff from first semester, we're able to solve these problems. All right, next up, problem number five. We're trying to find the value of X. So what do I do? Well, let's take a look at a few things that we see here. One, Q to S right here is the diameter, all right? That's important. And then right here, we do have P to R. That's uh, another chord and it is perpendicular. So if we have a diameter and we have a chord that's perpendicular, we have the perpendicular chord bisector theorem telling us that this chord right here, P to R, is being bisected by QS. So therefore, uh, P to T is equal to RT. And then we can go ahead and solve the problem out and put 2X minus 4 plus uh, 4.1 is equal to X minus 0 0.5. So now we can go ahead and solve all that together. Okay, so let's do that right here. We'll subtract X to both sides. I got X and I'm gonna add 4.1 to both sides right here. And then we end up with, uh, let's go ahead. We got 4.6 as your answer for x. Now don't forget, sometimes they do ask you to find particular lengths, so don't forget to plug that back in if you do need to. Uh, they didn't ask for that here, but I do remember on tests and quizzes, there are times where they do ask you to plug things back in and find certain lengths of uh, parts of the circle, okay? Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at number six. So looking at this again, I've got K to I, that's going to be a diameter because it goes through the center W. And then we also have right here, G to J, meaning that we have a perpendicular bisector because I've got a, a, a diameter and a chord that is perpendicular to that diameter. And we go ahead and figure out that 
g to h is equal to j to h. So we go ahead, we got 3x minus 5 is equal to 2x plus 1. We'll go ahead and subtract 2x to both sides, and then we'll add 5 to both sides, and x is equal to 6. All right, just like that. Pretty easy. One of our easier theorems right here, right? Let's go ahead and take a look at number 7 and 8. Good questions right here, okay? Once again, they're putting kind of all the theorems together. Um, they also use the theorems in this problem on word problems that you might see on a test later on. Okay, so let's take a look. First off, right here, what stands out to me is that I have P to E and B to P. And these are both congruent, okay? They're both three and it's perpendicular to a chord. All right, so they're both perpendicular to a chord. This one right here being A to C, and we've got chord D, F. All right, why is that important? Okay, remember, if I have chord that's equidistant to the center, okay, which I do, and it's perpendicular, all right, then that tells me that the chords A to C is equidistant and is equal to D, F. So what I'll go ahead and do right here is take 5x minus 2, and we'll set that to 3x plus 2. All right, so once again, I've got two chords here. I know they're equidistant to the center because it's shown, and it's perpendicular. Therefore, AC and DF are going to be equal to one another. All right, so we'll go ahead and solve this out. I'll subtract 3x to both sides. I'll add 2 to both sides. So 2x is equal to 4. And then we'll both divide both sides by 2, and x is equal to 2. All right, wonderful. Let's go to next to number eight. Idea is similar, okay? But this time, check this out. I know that the chord right here, VU and chord WX right here are congruent, okay? I know they're congruent because they tell me so. They're both 20. So what that tells me, because right here in the diagram, O to Z is perpendicular and OY is perpendicular to the chord, that means that these two right here, chords, or sorry, segments, we don't know that they're chords because they don't go all the way to the end of the circle, they're congruent to each other. So therefore, we can go ahead and put 4X minus 5 is equal to X plus 4. We'll solve things out, and then we've got ourselves uh, 3x is equal to 9, and x is equal to 3. Okay. All right, and there you go. I think that right there is it. We now finished up chapter 10.3 using chords. All right. Good luck with your homework. If you like what you just did right here, please subscribe, like, hey, and even have a comment if you want. Thanks a lot.